to Jeremiah chapter 42. That's where we're going to spend most of our time this evening. Jeremiah chapter 42 and then on into to chapter 43. And I want to share a lesson with us tonight that I've entitled, We Will Obey the Voice of the Lord. I want us to go back, oh, about 600 years before the birth of Christ. It's actually about 587, 586 B.C. And what we are going to see here at the uh, at close or near the end of the book of Jeremiah is the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. Remember, God had said this was going to happen. And he was going to use Babylon to bring this about. And, and Babylon actually comes against Jerusalem three different times. There are three different carrying aways. The first one, that's when Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego were taken back. And, and that was in about 606 B.C. And then there was a second time that they took captives back. And that, that's when Ezekiel was taken back in about 597 B.C. And then there's this third time that Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar comes, what he does is he lays siege to the city of Jerusalem. It, it goes on for over a year. And you can imagine how desperate the situation inside those city walls must have been. But eventually the city falls. And the, the Babylonians are able to come in. And what they do is they tear down the walls. They burn the city. They destroy the temple and they take back everybody that they can except for the very poorest and the very weakest among the people of the Jews. They leave them there in Jerusalem. But when you start at about verse, or chapter 39 in Jeremiah, you're, you're told about these things. The king at that time, Zedekiah, when the city falls, he tries to make a run for it. He's captured. And his own sons are killed right before his, his face. And then Nebuchadnezzar blinds him. The last thing that he saw was the death of his own sons. And then he's taken as a captive. What Nebuchadnezzar does is he places a man by the name of Gedaliah as governor over, over Jerusalem and over Judah. They don't have a king anymore. They have this governor. And he leaves soldiers there with him, a few of them, so that he could hold on to, to this power. Now, as they are taking people back to, to Babylon, Jeremiah at first is among those captives. But Nebuchadnezzar has given word that you let Jeremiah do whatever he wants. If he wants to come to Babylon, we'll take good care of him. But if he wants to go back to Jerusalem, he, he can do that. And that's what he does. He goes back to the city of Jerusalem to be among God's people, the very poorest, the very weakest. Well, Gedaliah is that governor, and he is trying to assure the people that if you will serve Babylon, they're going to be good to us. We can stay right here. We'll have food. We'll have our houses. Yes, we'll be under them, but things will will go well. And they do for a little while. There's a man by the name of Ishmael who happened to be sent by the king of the Ammonites. He's an assassin. And Gedaliah is warned. Johanan, who is really a, a leader among the Jews at that time, tries to tell Gedaliah, this, th this guy is going to try to kill you, but he won't believe him. But what happens is that this Ishmael is invited to dinner with Gedaliah. And at that dinner, he has about 10 men with him, and he rises up and he kills the governor of the Jews and those that are with him. He actually throws their bodies in a pit that King Asa had made years before. Nobody even knows about it for a whole day. In fact, the very next day, there are about 80 people that come who, who have shaved their beards, these men. They're in mourning, and, and they want to, to offer sacrifice. And, and, and this Ishmael says, yeah, come on, and, and you can join Gedaliah. Well, he 
He joined them to get a lie, all right. He kills them, all except for about 10 of them who were able to save themselves because they had treasure hidden in some fields, and he wanted that. But what Ishmael does then is take the poor, the weak, among the, the Jews, and he's going to lead them to the Ammonites. That's what he's going to try to do. But there is a man by the name of Johanan finds out about what's going on, he rallies the few Jews that are still there, and they're able to rescue those that were going to be taken to, to Ammon and bring them back to, to Judah. And so this Johanan then is, is their leader. Now, right at the end of chapter 41, we learn that this Johanan had an idea to take the people to Egypt. They were fearful of the Babylonians. You know, we've killed their governor, the one they put in charge. We've killed some of their soldiers, and, and they're going to take out their anger on us. We better head to Egypt. Well, that leads us then to chapter, chapter 42, and that, that's where we're going to spend our time this evening. And the first thing that I want us to notice as we think about them being a people that said, we want to obey the word of the Lord, we're going to notice that the people, they go to the right source. That, that's the first thing that they do. Notice with me here in chapter 42, verses 1 through 3. Here's what we're told. Then all the captains of the forces, and Johanan, the son of Korea, and Jezaniah, the son of Hosea, and all the people from the least even unto the greatest came near and said unto Jeremiah, the prophet, Let we beseech thee, our supplication be accepted before thee, and pray for us unto the Lord thy God, even for all this remnant. For we are left but a few of many, as thine eyes do behold us, that the Lord thy God may show us the way wherein we may walk and the thing that we may do. So you can see that there are people who come to Jeremiah. They want him to inquire of the Lord. They're doing, doing the right thing. That's a good thing. You know, when we have troubles, when we have difficulties, or even when we just want to know what the, our Lord wants us to do, where should we go? Well, you go to his word. Now, the Jews didn't always do that. A lot of times they didn't like hearing the word of God. You remember King Rehoboam. He didn't go to the right source. Why, well, he asked the older counselors what to do, and they told him, gave him good advice. Why, well, it probably would have established his kingdom, but he wouldn't listen. He went to his younger advisors and they told him what they wanted him to do. He thought that sounded a whole lot better. What ended up happening? The whole nation split in two. He went to the wrong source. Or you think about King Ahab. He had about 400 prophets who were saying, yeah, go to war, you're going to win. But then there was Micaiah. Remember why he couldn't stand Micaiah? couldn't stand Micaiah, Xavier, because he never said anything good about him. Never. Well, it's because there wasn't much good to say about King Ahab. What Micaiah tells him is the word of God, but he won't listen to it. Went to the wrong source. It cost him his life. And you know, if we go to the wrong source, it, it can cost us so dearly. I don't know how many people have told me when I try to talk to them about the scriptures or set up a Bible study, something along these lines. Well, you know, if I have a question, I'll ask my priest or I'll ask my pastor, you know, and they'll give me the answer. They'll tell me what I need to do. That's not the right answer. The right answer is, let's go to God's word. Do you remember what Isaiah said? those many years ago, the people of Israel, they were, they were a people that, well, wasn't uncommon for them to go to a wizard 
or a necromancer or a soothsayer. And he says, don't do that at all. No, in, in Isaiah 8 and verse 20, what he is going to say is, to the law and to the testimony. I, I love that little phrase. To the law and to the testimony. What's he saying? If we want answers, let's go to the Word, God's Word. To their credit, that's what these people said. Jeremiah, we want you to pray to God so that we can find out what he wants us to do. Now, here's a second thing I want us to see, and this is in verses 4 on through verse 6. They said, we will obey the voice of the Lord. Read this with me. Follow along. Then Jeremiah, the prophet, said unto them, I have heard you. Behold, I pray unto the Lord your God, according to your words, and it shall come to pass that whatsoever thing the Lord shall answer you, I will declare it unto you. I will keep nothing back from you. Then they said to Jeremiah, The Lord be true and faithful witness between us. If we do not even according to all things for the which the Lord thy God shall send thee to us, whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we send thee that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. And so here they make this commitment. They tell, Jeremiah says, I'm going to go to the Lord. And I'm not going to hold anything back. Whatever he tells me, that's what I'm going to tell you to do. Now, what they want to know is really, specifically, where should we go? Where should we call home? Should we stay here in Judah, around Jerusalem, or should we go to Egypt? And so they said, we, Jeremiah, find out, and we will obey the word or the voice of the Lord our God. Well, that's a good, good thing. That's a good thing. That's the attitude we all need to have, that no matter what he says, good or bad, that's what we're going to do. When we come to God's word, that needs to be our, our attitude. I love it when we read in John chapter 2 about the first miracle that Jesus performs in Cana of Galilee there at the wedding feast. Do you remember what his mother said? You know, at first, Jesus said, Woman, what have I to do with thee? This isn't my problem. What did she say to those servants? She said, Whatsoever he said, do it. That's what you do. And that needs to be our mindset. Whatever our Lord has told us to do, that's what we're going to do. And that's what they said they would do. Now, that's a lot easier to say than it is to do. It's easy to speak those words, but it's not always easy to do it. And in fact, one of the reasons that the Jews were suffering the way that they were is because they hadn't always had that attitude. If you go over to Jeremiah chapter 6, and you look at about verse 16, you find Jeremiah telling them, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. All of this that they were going through, or had gone through, could have been avoided if they had walked in God's ways. But they said, We're not going to do it. But at least now, to their credit, they're saying, Yes, we will. So they go to the right source. That's a good thing. And they make the right statement. Whatever he says, that's what we're going to do. We will obey the voice of the Lord. Now, here's the third thing. God reveals to them what they must do. We're going to read just a, a little bit here. It's verses 7 on through verse 19. I know that'll take just a, a couple minutes, but just follow along in, in your Bibles here because what you have is what God tells Jeremiah. Jeremiah is going to God, asking, should we stay here? Should we go? Look at what 
we find. Verse 7, And it came to pass after ten days that the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah. Then called he Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces which were with him, and all the people from the least even to the greatest, and said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, unto whom ye sent me to present your supplication before him. If you will still abide in this land, then I will build you and not pull you down, and I will plant you and not pluck you up, for I repent, repent me of the evil that I have done unto you. Be not afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom you are afraid. Be not afraid of him, saith the Lord, for I am with you to save you, to deliver you from his hand. And I will show mercies unto you that he may have mercy upon you and cause you to return to your own land. Here's God's message. You stay here. Now, that might go against conventional wisdom. They were thinking, we probably ought to get out of here. He's going to send people here and when he finds out that Gedaliah has been killed, those that he left to guard Gedaliah have been killed, he's going to take out vengeance. That's not going to be a good thing for us. We better get out of here. But God said, you stay here, and I'll take care of you. I'll build you up. I'll plant you. You don't have to fear the king of Babylon. Verse 13, but if you say... We will not dwell in this land, neither obey the voice of the Lord your God, saying, No, but we will go into the land of Egypt, where we shall see no war, nor hear the sound of the trumpet, nor have hunger of bread, and there we will, will dwell. That's what they thought would happen to them if they stayed in Jerusalem. And now, therefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye remnant of Judah. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, if you wholly set your faces to enter into Egypt and go to sojourn there, then it shall come to pass that the sword which you feared shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt, and the famine whereof you were afraid shall follow close after you there in Egypt, and there ye shall die. So shall it be with all the men that set their faces to go into Egypt to sojourn there, they shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, and none of them shall remain or escape from the evil that I will bring upon them. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as mine anger and my fury have been poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my fury be poured forth upon you when you shall enter into Jerusalem, and ye shall be an execration, that is a, a terrible curse, and an astonishment and a curse, and a reproach and ye shall see this place no more. The Lord has said concerning you O ye remnant of Judah go ye not into Egypt. Know certainly that I have admonished you this day. Pretty clear, isn't it? God said, and Jeremiah reports it to them he wants us to stay here. If we stay here in Jerusalem, in Judah, he'll protect us. If we go to Egypt, we follow our own wisdom, the things that we feared, that's what's going to kill us there. We'll die by war, we'll die by famine, we'll die by pestilence. But we'll die in Egypt. We'll never get to come back home. And so... Jeremiah relays this to them. You know, God, God has always let man know what he needs to do. You remember over in Acts chapter 9 and verse 6? That, that's, that's where Saul of Tarsus asked that question, Lord, what would thou have me to do? And the Lord says, go into the city, and there it will be told thee what thou must do. And of course, Ananias is sent to tell him, what he needed to do. And that was to arise and be baptized, to have his sins washed away. But the Lord has always let us know what we need to do. He's never just left it up to us to decide what to do to please him or, or to be brought into a right relationship with him. He's always revealed it. And here he does unto the people of Israel. Well, 
in Jeremiah 43, 1 through 7, you see the response of the people. Here's what we read. It came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto all the people, all the words of the Lord their God, for which the Lord their God had sent him to them, even all these words, then spake Azariah the son of Hoshiah, and Johanan the son of Kareah, and all the proud men, saying unto Jeremiah, Thou speakest falsely. The Lord our God hath not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. But Baruch the son of Neriah setteth thee on against us, for to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they might put us to death and carry us away captives into Babylon. So Jehanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces, and all the people obeyed not the voice of the Lord to dwell in the land of Judah. But Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces took all the remnant of Judah that were returned from all nations, whether they had been driven to dwell in the land of Judah, even men and women and children and the king's daughters and every person that Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had left with Gedaliah, the son of Ahiakim, the son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah, the prophet, and Baruch, the son of Neriah. So they came into the land of Egypt, for they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. They had their minds made up already. And so they decided, we're not going to do what God said to do. We're going to do what's right in our own eyes. What they really wanted was confirmation. Here's what we want to do. Here's our plan. We're going to go to Egypt. God, we want you to say that's okay. Anybody here ever go to mom and dad or, and ever say, hey, if I ask you something, will you say yes? How's that work for us? Not, not so good. Parents are a little wiser than, than we might give them credit for. They, they figure that one out pretty quickly. But what they wanted was God just to go along with what they wanted. They really weren't concerned about following him. You see, it, it's pretty easy to say, we will obey the voice of the Lord. It's not always easy to do that. James chapter 1 and verse 22, James is going to tell us that this is the desire our Lord has for us. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You see, it's easy. It's easy for us to say, yeah, we'll, we'll do what God said as long as it goes along with our thinking. But what about when it doesn't? What if, it, what, what if it's not the way that we would do it? What are we going to do then? There are a lot of folks who will say, well, I don't think it really matters. You know, God will be pleased as long as I'm sincere about it. You never see that in the scriptures. What we see is what God wants more than anything from us is our love. And how is that love shown? It's through our obedience. Herein is the love of God that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not grievous. They went on to Egypt and they suffered the things that God said that they would suffer because they rejected His word. 